Hello, hello. This is Johannes Wateri from Hold to Run. Today I'll be showing you how I implemented file download with progress monitoring from server side. In the front end, in the mobile, I'll be using Kotlin and we'll recap the download function in retrofit environment. And for the demonstration, we'll be using ServerDoc API tester application, which just downloaded a video file. And in the back end, I'm operating with Gator framework. And in here, we'll go through how to respond with a file. Good. Before we start, if you like what I do, you can check it out in my homepage howturun.com and in here you can also find the application ServerDoc among other applications that I have released. If you like to test them, go directly into Google Play and you can download them in here. I release applications with Holturun name. Good, let's start. Okay, first things first, let's take a look what we are querying from the server side. So we have our endpoint address, we have assigned custom get file function. This allows the application to save the response body as a file. We really don't want to display unlimited amount of data in the screen space. It could cause out of memory exceptions. We have given default name. It's not really needed. Just make sure that you are actually passing the file query into your server side. So we will use query parameters with key file name and the actual file name that we want to search for. This is the data that the server side is requiring. Okay, so how did I actually implement this download function in the code? So once the user triggers the download request, we will launch coroutine task, which is a thread. And to ensure we don't double launch anything, we always want to save that job into HashMap. I have built this custom object to track my download transfer tasks. In here you can see that I have a key and the task. So I can always make a double check if it's active or if it's existing or not. And with this I'll let the job launch for the download. But I'll prevent any double tasks until it's finished. Good. As this was retrofit and OK HTTP, you have to understand how to set up your query parameters in the API provider. This is not something I'll go through today. This is the key place to define anything how this application should communicate with the server side. So that's all the parameters you pretty much set up in the server doc application. But for the file download, we have to use custom get file, which I have done in here. So this is going to be handling any size of object in the retrofit. Therefore, you have to annotate your interface for the API request as streaming at streaming. Once we have the response from the server, we can continue to actually download the file from the response body. But before we go in here, Let's take a look at the server side code. Okay, in the server side Gator framework, this 
get function is our endpoint to respond with a file. So we this is where we were querying. I'll be first going for the ID which I request to be passed in the endpoint URL. If there's no ID, I will just return an error message, bad request, telling that there was no ID. I cannot search any files if I don't know the user or device that is querying such file. As always, I'll ensure to check authorization before I go through my file system code because I don't want to let any random guys snooping around in my back end. Then I'll search for the file name. This was the parameter that we passed as a query parameter with the server.doc application. This has to exist for us to actually know what file do we want to search from that user ID's upload folders. If there's no file name, we're just gonna return error message of bad request telling there's no file, there's no file name. If we have the ID and file name, we can go into our root system and search for the file. So I have created my custom search file function in which I will pass our uploads root folder with the user ID and the actual file name. In here, we'll look for the path folder of the root folder which was uploaded in that path for that user. And if that folder exists, we're gonna list all files in that folder. And then we can search for that specific file name. And if that file actually exists, we will return the file for the user. If not, we'll just return null. Before we respond, we have to, or at least I want to add the file name into the response headers. Content disposition seems to be the correct header where you can add the file name. In the file name of the content disposition, we add the file name. That way, when the client receives the download file, he can actually use the original name of the file and he doesn't have to use the default file name for saving it. Once we have the file, we will call respond file function. This is how Ktor responds with a file. If we don't have any file, we will just respond with the code of no content. In here, I don't want to add anything into the respond body because otherwise we'll be handling such string as a JSON object and save that as a file. It doesn't make sense. Let's go back to the mobile application. Now, in the client side mobile application, in Kotlin environment, we have just received the file response and it has been success. We have body content and su response was success. Now we can start streaming the file content. This was, after all, annotated as a stream in the retrofit. I have created my file tool with a custom function to save file download with update progress. That's how we can also monitor the download progress while downloading and saving the file. We will pass the response body response into our custom function. In here, 
First, we'll get the file size. You can get it with the body and content length. Then we'll be querying the mind type. You'll get the mind type fr from the response, headers and header params content type. You have to know these header strings for sure, but for this I have created an object where I have written all typical header values. I bet there's some more. If our headers doesn't contain any mind type, I'll ask it from the body content type. That could be the other place to get the correct mind type for the file. Then we have to search for the file name. We added, after all, we added that in our server side into the content disposition. This is quite complicated and I've created custom function to get the file name from the content disposition headers. So we'll pass in the response. So in our custom function, we'll get the content disposition from the headers. Again, you can just hard code that string, but I'm using my object for header params. Once we have the content disposition, we're going to check if it's null. If it's not, we continue to split from file name with index 1 and again split with delimiter from index 0. That way we should get the actual file name, which you can see in here. It's a .mp4. If for any reason the server side did not add the actual file name into content disposition headers, I'll just use the default name, which I allow the user to add in the server doc application, so he can define at least some name. Okay, now we can actually start streaming the file from our server. Before we can do that though, we have to set up the Android system file handling, which is quite complicated. Depending what Android version you are operating, you have to go through the media store download columns. So let's start. Start with content values and in those values put media store download columns display name and add the actual file name so the Android can save it with the correct name we have just extracted. Then values put media store download columns and the correct mind type if it's a videos mp4 or images jpeg or something similar. This is what is going to define that. Then we have to do values put and we want to assign the downloads root folder. So in Android environment directory downloads, it's default for downloads. And I'm just going to add my custom root folder for server doc downloads. That's where the file will be saved. Then we will insert that file into that downloads folder with these values we just defined. And we will open output stream into that file with the URL and define these permissions, read, write, can recall what the T exists for. So once we have the file out stream, we can continue to actually write the byte from the byte stream. We get the byte stream from the body by calling byte stream, which gives us an actual input stream. 
This is the source of the file and we can start the download from the server. With the input stream, we're not gonna directly write that input stream as a whole into, the, into our local file output stream because we want to, after all, follow the progress of the download. Like so. So this time we'll be defining a buffer of 4096 bytes as a byte array. And we'll make a while loop. So while we have bytes to write, we will write those bytes into our local file output stream as so and we'll be adding the progress of written bytes into our bytes written variable like so. With this we can keep updating the download progress into our progress tracker. I'm using my custom object to track the up download progress. In here I have prepared Jetpack Compose specific mutable state map where I have the object ID and I'll be just passing in the progress like so. So the ID is actually the object that I'm looking for. And in the Jetpack Compose I can keep on updating as the download progresses. Good. Once we have finished, we have to close the input stream, output stream, and then we'll return the file name if it was success. So in the upper level service class, I know if it was finished correctly or not. If it for any reason fails, I'm just gonna return null. Now we have finished our file download. And I'll check if it was success. With this knowledge, while I have the actual file name, I'll just update the file name into my custom item, which I can later on display on my screen that hey, we just downloaded this, this file and we saved it in this location. Good. And I'll just notify the user that when the download has been finished. So let's see the actual success of download. Our time is 9.41. Let's start. We're downloading and our progress monitoring is updating and we just finished. 9.41. Good. And the actual file was downloaded into Android phones download server doc downloads with such name. Let's go and see. There it is. We actually have plenty of those same files because we did many downloads into this folder. Remember to empty it every now and then. Good. That was all that I wanted to share today. If you like what I do, you can go and see my homepage in holturan.com and see my applications. Or you can directly go into Google Play and download them yourself and try. We'll be back.